I'm Eugene Jodry, engineer, firefighter, Station 17. Started my career July 8th, 1985. My first helmet, it, uh, that's what the uh, what we had for equipment back then. It was very light. I guess it was the bare minimum protection. Boots, with long raincoats and long rubber boots, and that was that was what we had for gear. And the, the helmets. So. There was no uh, no flash hoods. The, the old BAs. When I first started, I was on the truck by myself, so I had to talk in the radio. I had to shift gears and work the sire and, and so on. And I remember guys riding on the back of the trucks, like on the tailboard, standing up, holding on to a, a bar going across the back of the truck. Most of the trucks back when I first started were all uh, standard. You had to learn how to drive a stick shift. So well, back then, you cut corners and you did what you could to. Uh, you know, get to the scene as quick as possible, as safe as possible. I started my career in uh, July 8th, 1985, uh, back in the old Westfall Coal Harbor Fire Department days as pre-amalgamation. My first posting was in Coal Harbor, uh, the old Coal Harbor Fire Station, uh, not far from the present day Station 17. Uh, my first crew would have been uh, Captain Gilbert Matthews, uh, Firefighter Mike LaRue, uh, Firefighter Dave Savage, and myself. Yes, uh, I had some, I guess, a few mentors or people that I, I treat, tried to uh, you know, use their examples and, on, uh, and followed their, their way of uh, working in the fire station. Uh, first one would be uh, Chief Murray Elliott, uh, who took a chance on a 19-year-old kid. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he had the an obvious job of putting a, a crew together or a team to uh, protect the community and uh, he did a great job of taking people from various trades and, and uh, experiences and backgrounds and uh, trying to put it together as, as a team. Uh, next would be I guess his deputy chief Brian Chan who uh, Brian really loved sports and he, t he tried to use that as a like a team builder for the fire service and try to get people to work together and so on. Next would be, there was a Captain Don Crooks who uh, was just a big kid at heart and he loved, he loved making everything fun. So when we trained, it was fun. We had uh, competitions, of course, like who could get dressed the quickest, who could uh, put your BA on the quickest, uh, he liked to do mock-ups of uh, car accidents or, you know, different different types of things that would help you through your career, and and he'd like to tr make training fun. Uh, when next one would be been probably Captain Matthew uh, Gilbert Matthews. He uh, he was my first captain on the job, and uh, again, you know, he, just the way he carried himself was, was a good example to follow. Mike LaRue, who I worked with, and he made things fun. He always, you know, once the bell went off, let's go, let's get the job done. And I guess finally my father, who uh, gave me a, you know, his, his work ethic, which was, you know, if you start something, finish it. You know, the, the job's not done until it's completely done. So I guess those would be my, my mentors. Oh, it would be hard to pick just one. So uh, I've worked with so many over 38 years. Uh, I've worked with so many people, you know, with so many experiences, so many uh, backgrounds in that, that, and with promotions, retirements, uh, how, so many people. So no, I, I couldn't just pick one person, but uh, very many, a lot of people I really enjoyed working with over the years.
Wow, change is uh, so many. Uh, over 38 years plus, uh, it's the gear, just the firefighting gear, uh, you know, the helmets, like I've got a, an old, it almost feels like plastic helmet uh, when I first started. The, the bunker gear, or we didn't have bunker gear when I first started. It was a long, a long trench coat, almost like a canvas type of rain jacket. The, the long, the long boot, rubber boots that come up to your mid thigh. Uh, the equipment, the uh, materials back then, like we had steel BA bottles. So they, uh, they were heavy and they only had half the capacity of the previous, you know, or the, the equipment today. So it was, uh, you know, those things that the trucks so much better now in closed cabs. I remember when I first started, we were riding on the tailgate of the of the trucks, and and uh, even if there was a place to sit down, it wasn't covered over. So, uh, you know, tremendous that way. Uh, BAs, you know, were demand BAs, so demand air. So, if you wanted a breath, you had to actually take a breath, and there was no positive pressure. So if if there was, if you tech, if you didn't have a good seal, you you took in smoke or steam or anything like that. So it was, uh, yeah, the the gear has come a long ways. What do I love about the job? Uh, the ability to, I mean, it's you never know when you walk in. The station in the morning, how your day's going to go. So, you know, it's forever changing. Uh, you could go to medical calls, or whatever. But the ability to help people, I think, would really enjoy, and the camaraderie. Like, there's a lot of people that, you know, say different backgrounds and so on, and it's, it's fun. It's it's fun to come in, and you never know what the day's going to bring, and, and the ability to help people is 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 great. Yes, uh, family friendly story. Uh, I guess one of my favorites, silly little story, but uh, we went to a, a multi-vehicle MVA one night and I was tasked to take one vehicle and look after it. And while the, the rest of the crew was extricating people out of a, another vehicle, I was given a, there was a gentleman in a little Chevette and it was, pretty demolished and he was trapped inside and as I walked up and I was talking to him and seeing if he had any injuries or anything I couldn't help but see the the roof of the the vehicle and it looked like the uh, stalactites from like a cave and what had happened was he had he was a mudder or a, someone that did drywall and he had a couple of buckets of mud in the back of his car and when it, the collision happened it flew all over the place and it was dripping down from the roof of the car. And I'm like, so I got to talking to him and he's, I said, you know, are you all right? And he says, yeah, you know, I don't have any injuries. But he said, I can't get out, I'm trapped. I said, yeah, I realize that. But I said, it's gonna take a while that we're working on another vehicle. Uh, we'll be with, you know, we'll try and get you out shortly. But he says, but I gotta use the washroom. And I said, okay. He said, I gotta go real bad. I said, well, go ahead. No, he said, you don't understand. I need to go really bad. And I said, but you don't understand. Go ahead. Like, you're, you're trapped. We can't get you out. So go ahead. <laughs> so, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Highlights. Yeah, there are, I guess a few. Uh, I, I guess when I grew up in this community, so there's lots of people that I know or related to and so on, and friends that from eventually you run into. Uh, but highlight, I guess, would be being successful in, uh, in CPR. Uh, had over, you know, a f few uh, incidents where we were lucky enough to, uh, to give someone another day or another week or so on. And uh, I guess I'm pretty proud of that, as well as uh, I answered the door one day at the station here, and uh, who who's at the other end but 
Sydney, Sydney Crosby holding the Stanley Cup. So that was a pretty cool part of the job too. So, you know, from helping people to receiving the Stanley Cup was pretty neat. miss the people, the firefighters, the, the routine, you know, every fourth day I knew where I was going to be. I could look ahead years and say, okay, I'm working that day or not, but the routine and say, working with so many great people over the years, different backgrounds and, uh, and so on, a lot of good people and uh, miss a lot of them and, you know, hope that the ones that remain are going to have a, a nice, safe career. I guess to be a sponge, to soak up as much information as you can, uh, knowledge, you know, listen to people, listen to the people that are, that work ahead of you, that are ahead of you in the job, uh, learn from their mistakes, you know, it's better to learn from their mistakes than your own. So, you know, trust your, trust your, uh, trust your training and I say, take as much information in as you can because you'll, you'll need it along the time, you know, from time to time to do your job and uh, work together, look after each other and uh, play safe. I, well, I'd like to travel, I guess, uh, you know, take a few trips with, with my wife and uh, find a new hobby. I like playing golf, but you can't do that uh, here anyways. You can't do that 12 months a year. So, so uh, yeah, play a little golf and uh, do some traveling and uh, find a new hobby. <laughs> Working my last shift, December 17th, 2023. Uh, I'll be retiring with 38 and a half years service.